What is success to you? More money? More time off? A statue erected in your honor, admired for generations and generations of pigeons? Well, Aaron Walker tells us, in this episode, how to best determine our own success. It's as clever as it is insightful. So stay tuned to the Peak Performers Podcast. Welcome to this edition of Peak Peak Performers Performers Podcast Podcast. with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak peak performer performer in any area area of of your your life life or business. You know, let's talk a little bit. I know you can't talk about specific clients, but I just want to, as a group, what do you find? Are most of them entrepreneurs, business owners? All of them. Okay. Yeah. So help me, what are they struggling with and, and what seems to be the common theme or thread running between everybody? Yeah, focus is one. And uh, that, that one's a big one because there's so many opportunities. You know, in this arena that you and I play in every day, I can go down 50 different trails. You know, they all look good. And what I tell people is you've got to write down your plan. Otherwise, it's just a dream. Here's the thing. People come to me, and as your platform gets bigger, you get more opportunities, obviously. And it's like, I can't do everything. I don't have the bandwidth to do all those things. But if you're not careful, you'll go down these trails, and I say, you'll look like a bottle rocket without a stick. You'll be spewing around everywhere with no sense of direction. And you've got to have a plan. Right now, I can tell you months in advance what I'm going to be doing each day. I know the theme that we're going to be studying each month. I know the books I'm going to be reading. I have the questions already down for the mastermind groups. I know where we're going to be meeting for our live meetups. I know the conferences I'm going to. I know the podcast interviews I'm going to be on between now and May. I know when they're going to be released. It's very scheduled. We meet in Chicago four times a year with my COO and we plan every quarter, a quarter in advance. Sometimes we get lucky and we plan six months out. That way I don't have to decide what I'm going to do today. I look at my plan and I say, I'm going to do this because I know that's the lead indicator I've got to do today. The lag indicator is the customers that come, the mastermind members that show up, the dollars that are in the bank. Those are the lag indicators. But if you don't focus intentionally and develop a strategy by which you're going to operate your day, somebody else will plan your day. And you sending me an email is not going to derail me, right? I'm going to get to your email, but I've got an intentional plan. And guys fight that every single day. The other thing is prioritizing your priorities, right? Not a such thing as we talked about earlier, Rory Vaden's book, you know, Procrastinate on Purpose. Here you go again. Decide on the things that you're not going to do. Make a decision. These are the areas that I'm going to put my time, effort, and energy. Something's going to suffer, but be sure you pick the things that don't suffer that are important to you. Yeah, I do the same thing. I plan my uh, almost my entire year is planned out, but for the most part, the next six months are you know really pretty well locked in. But what's interesting is every single day I make a recommitment to my schedule. And I look at it, you know, I plan my day before, but then that morning I look at it again and I say, all right, this is what I'm going to commit to, including what am I going to do as far as my exercise, my food, and if I'm going to have a glass of wine or not. And when I go out to dinner and I said I wasn't going to have a glass of wine today, I don't. That's it. I just make a commitment and stick to it. And like you said, somebody, I, I love that analogy, a bottle rocket without a stick. Well, that's the way you are if you're not focused, you know, and that's been one of my biggest assets is the ability to be very consistent and very focused. And in order to do that, you have to get great clarity. That's the third one that most people are unsure on. They don't have clarity. And the reason they don't have clarity is, is because there's so many opportunities. They don't know which way to go. Greg McCowan's book, Essentialism, can help you discern that. All right. So we got focus. We've got clarity. What else? Yeah, focus and clarity are the two big ones. And the other one is that we all want work-life balance. As we just said earlier, there's not a such thing as balance. How much time do you spend at the office? How much time do you spend at home? Now, I want to go down this path just for a moment, if I could. Yeah, please. And the thing, the, the thing that I want to talk about is the success and the significance, because this is where guys get really, really tripped up, is you've got to predetermine what success is to you. And people ask me all the time, Big A, what is, they call me Big A, by the way. Now now we're friends, you can call me Big A. I like it, Big A. But here's the thing, here's the thing is, what does success even mean? I had to ask myself that after the automobile accident. I had to say, what is it I'm trying to do? You know, I got a place, you know, in the, I'm not saying that bragging. I say that very humble, but I'm just saying that 
don't make these tangible possessions your God. I love to make money. I hate it when people with money go, money's not important. I want to go, you liar. It is important. Quit telling people it's not important. Or people will say, I don't do it for the money. That's a lie. Offer it for free if you don't do it for the money. And you won't get a single taker. Nobody will. Just don't make it your primary focus. It's okay to make money. Listen, I tell everybody, I love to make money. I want to make more money. Because you can't be generous if you're broke. Yeah. You, you can't help people if you're broke. I love to help people. I'm very generous. And I say that with humility, but I am very generous. I love to help people. I love to help my family. I want to help my daughters and my grandkids. I want to give them a leg up. And it's hard to do that when you're broke. So don't apologize for making money. Success to me is choosing my own schedule and having a little bit of financial freedom. I like not having to worry about paying the electric bill, right? It feels good. It's like, okay, electric bill, boom, okay. I like that. It feels good. Don't ever apologize for the do that. I also like to get up on Friday and go, you know what? I don't think I'm going to work today. I think I'm going to do this or that. I like to do that. For me, that's successful. I love my family. My family is absolutely at the top of the list. I want an engaging family and I want meaningful relationships. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Pick them carefully. And I pick them very, very carefully. I have about 10 families that we do life together with. And I mean, I'm all in. We vacation together. We're in accountability together. We're in mastermind together. We go to church together. You know, we visit with each other. We're at celebrate together. We do everything together. You got to be really, really careful. Meaningful relationships will serve you well. I want a clear conscience. Thor, I want to be able to lay down at night and go, I gave it all I had today. I squeezed every drop out of the towel. I didn't leave nothing on the field. I gave everything, and I was honest. I told the truth. I'm a person of character. I have integrity, and I don't have to apologize for anything that I did today. See, for me, that's success, taking care of yourself physically. I'm a little older than you, you know, but I'm still within about 15 pounds of what I weighed when I graduated from high school almost 40 years ago. You got to take care of yourself. Here's a big one. And these guys that I coach all the time wrestle with this Thor all the time is learning to be content, but not complacent. Mm. And man, people get that confused all the time. People say someday I'll be happy when this happens. If I can just make 50,000 more dollars, then I'll be happy. If I can just get that vacation home, if I can just get that raise, then I'll be happy. It's not true. Nope. I'm just going to tell you, it's not true. You keep mo moving the bar. You will never quit moving the bar. You've got to want to add value. See, if you lay down every night and go, how can I add more value? What can I, the money will come, right? Quit chasing the dollars and start adding content, start adding value and you'll learn to be content. Having a clear sense of direction. We've talked a little bit about clarity. You've got to have a clear sense of direction because if you aim at nothing, you're not going to hit it. So you've got to be able to do that. I love to dream. Thor, I'm a dreamer. I don't know about you, man. Robin and I just got off a week cruise literally yesterday. We just got back and I unplugged. Literally, I went dark. I mean, people are like, where'd Big A go? Big A's dark because he's sitting on the balcony of a cruise ship with his beautiful bride of 37 years dreaming. What do we want to do? Where do we want to go? How do we want to impact our kids? What, you know what I'm saying? Et cetera. You fill in the blanks. I told you I'm a person of faith. So I really love trusting in a higher power, really studying that, having meaning and purpose. And I want to leave a legacy someday of wisdom, right? I want people to look back and say, big A was wise, not big A had a lot of money. Big A was wise and he was a giver, but here's where the water meets the wheel is significance. People are like, I don't even know what that means. Like, how can I even be significant? Really what it is, is defined pretty simple, Thor. It's meeting the needs of others. Mm. Man, I was so shallow in this area. All I could think of was myself. How can I get one more store? How can I get a little more money? How can I get a bigger place, a nicer car? Nothing wrong with all those things. And we've already covered that. Nothing wrong with it, but keep it in perspective. And then I told myself, I need to start listening to other people more. I need to fully engage other people and stop waiting my turn to talk, right? That's where we mess up. Listen, I went to buy a new car recently and the guy said, Hey, I got this. I said, I don't want that car. I want a blue car with a brown leather interior. He said, I got a red one over here. You need, I don't want a red one. 
I want a blue car with a brown leather interior. The red one's got rebates. I said, Robin, let's go. This moron's not listening. <laughs> Listen, it's not hard, guys. You need to stop talking, trying to make the sale. Stop. Quit doing that. Start figuring out how you can add value. Listen to your clients. They'll tell you exactly what they want if you'll just listen. Help others when they can't repay you. Uh-oh. There's a big one. I can't do that for him because what is my ROI? Well, forget the ROI. You need to help people that can't repay you, right? You need to get down there. Listen, we all need help. Thor, you need help. I need help. We all need help. We need to quit looking at people as tangible things, and we need to start looking at them as people. You know, it's people over profit, right? We need to start thinking about how we can help other people. Be available when it's not convenient. Everybody says all the time, well, it's not convenient for me. Well, you know what? It's net. We're all busy. Thor, how busy are you, man? We're all busy. <laughs> exactly. We got to stop doing that. We got to give because we want to, not because we should. We need to think about other people for the long term. We need to set our personal desires aside for the benefit of others. And then we need to have the foresight to invest long term in other people so that we can change generations to come. And man, when you do that, you will have success and significance like you never dreamed possible. Who's holding you accountable? Many will answer, myself. Well, that only goes so far. You'll do more for others than you'll do for yourself. If you're not getting the results that you want, need, and desire, it comes down to your accountability. If you're ready to stop dabbling and really play full out, head on over to ThorConklin.com and under services, check out our real accountability system. This is not for the timid or weak of heart. This is only for those individuals that are truly committed to taking their game to the next level. Yeah, you know, I think it's so difficult sometimes for men to ask for help because it's always like, you know, I've got this, I can handle this. And I remember a couple months ago, I went out to be trained by some Navy SEALs in the, on the West Coast. And as we're lugging 300 pounds on a stretcher up a hill with three other guys, four other guys, I, you got to the point where you need to take some of the sandbags off the stretcher and somebody had to carry two and somebody had none. And then you kind of rotate it and you couldn't do it if you all tried the entire time to keep the same amount of weight or resistance on your back. You needed to ask for help. Even the strongest, you know, young guys, I'm 53, I'm in pretty good shape, but there were guys there that were getting ready to go into the SEAL program and they needed help at certain times. And it was a real interesting distinction to go, you know what? It's okay. I can ask for help. And someone you need, you, right, you need to ask more questions early on, right? Yeah. That's what we need to do. We need to let the veil down. We need to be more authentic and genuine and stop letting that pride stand in the way. And you need to I ask a million questions. I always have. I'll continue to ask a million questions because there is counsel in the multitudes, right? The wisdom of, uh, you only have one lens. You yeah. only have one life experience. And when you surround yourself with trusted advisors that have nothing to gain or lose as a result of what they tell you, now we've got a team. Now we have the counsel of the multitudes. Robin and I was going to do a real big business deal recently, and we were convinced it was the thing to do. I was convinced. She was convinced. We prayed about it, talked about it. And it was like, we're good to go. She goes, what's your guys say? And I said, well, I hadn't asked them yet. I went and asked them to make a long story short. Eight of the 10 guys said, don't do it. And I'm like, what are you saying? They said, don't do it. And I, they gave me every reason, made perfect sense. You don't know what you don't know. I went back to Robin with my tail tucked between my legs saying, honey, we can't do it. And here's why. Well, we're glad that we asked because it would have been a miserable failure. Yeah. It made perfect sense. Guys, ask more questions. Let the veil down. Be more transparent. Be more honest with yourself. Let your pride and your ego go and ask more questions. Yeah, being vulnerable is an extreme state of, uh, in my opinion, strength. When you're well, vulnerable, you got, start. Yeah, you got right. nothing to hide. It's like bring, bring it on. You know, I've got a group of advisors as well around me that I spend uh, once a month uh, on business issues and, and, and bring stuff to them. And, you know, I always say, you know, God gave me two ears and one mouth for a reason because I need to listen more than I need to talk. Without a question, man. We all need that. Thank you so much for listening today. I really do appreciate your time, and I hope you found today's show valuable. If you would like to receive these shows automatically to your phone or to your computer, 
simply go to iTunes and subscribe. After listening to several of his shows, if you're so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating as this helps us reach additional people and spread the message. If you're truly committed to taking your life to the next level and doing whatever it takes to become a peak performer, but something's holding you back, something is blocking your way, and you just can't seem to figure out what it is, send me an email to info at thorconklin.com and I'd be more than happy to get on the phone with you. We'll schedule a 15-minute discovery call. No obligation, no cost. I absolutely love to hear from the listeners. And if there's something I can do to help, I'd be more than happy to do that. Also, if you found something of great interest in today's show and you want to share that with your friends and family, simply go to my Facebook page, Thor Conklin. Click on the episode, hit the share button, and share it on your page. You can follow me at Twitter at Thor Conklin. The website is ThorConklin.com. We're constantly adding new free resources, discussing additional tricks, tips, tools, and strategies on how to be a peak performer. Remember, I try to keep these episodes short so you can listen to them during dot time, doing other things, commuting, driving, walking, working out. Decide to be a peak performer in all that you do. And until tomorrow, have an absolutely amazing day. That concludes part two of the Peak Performers Podcast interview with Aaron Walker. Check us out next time when Aaron spills the beans on all of his secrets to successful accountability. That's on the Peak Performers Podcast. We'll see you at the top. 